operation of an Edison cylinder phonograph is really simple and intuitive, but if you've never owned one before, it can appear mystifying. I'm working here with an Edison standard phonograph from around 1905. Your machine may look slightly different, but the principles will be the same. I'll point out any important differences as we go on. Let's look at the parts of the upper works. The mandrel is the part that holds the record. The end gate, or swing arm, swings into place and snaps into the end of the mandrel. Depending on the year your machine was made, you may not have an end gate. The reproducer, or sound box, is the part that makes the racket. Your reproducer may look slightly different than the one on this machine. The carriage advances the reproducer across the mandrel at a constant rate of speed. There is a lift lever at the base of the carriage. Your lift lever may be of a slightly different design than the one on this machine. And here is the on-off switch. In order to adjust the speed control on most models, you have to access the motor. Be sure to crank is removed, then lift up on the slats. This knurled screw is the speed control. For most of the mass-produced Edison records you may encounter, the speed was standardized, but you may still find a slight variation between records. Twist the screw down to speed up your machine, or twist it up to slow it down. On early Edison models, you do not have to access the motor to set the speed. You'll see the speed control extending through the bed plate. I'm going to gently remove the reproducer to show you the needle. Your stylus, which isn't much bigger than a grain of salt, is at the end of this little bar. Edison machines use a jeweled stylus, and your stylus should be good for hundreds of planes. If it ever wears out, it can be replaced as part of a reproducer rebuild. Hold the cylinder between your fingers like this. There are two types of records, 2-minute and 4-minute. This is a 2-minute Edison standard phonograph, and this is a 2-minute black wax record that we're going to play. If you try to play the wrong type of cylinder, it'll sound garbled. In the next tutorial, I'm going to explain the difference between 2-minute records and 4-minute records and 2 and 4 minute machines. The records are tapered and the mandrel is tapered, so there's only one way that the record can sit on the mandrel. The title side goes to the right. Seat the record so it's just snug enough not to wander, but not too tight. If your machine is equipped with an end gate, snap the end gate into place. Now we can turn on the machine. Grab the lift lever, move the carriage to the beginning of the record, and gently lower the reproducer onto the record. When you're finished, be sure to remove the record from the mandrel. Black wax records can freeze to the mandrel overnight if you let them sit. As long as we're here, let's do some simple lubrication. A drop of light oil on the ledge and wipe it clean. A drop of light oil on the back rod and wipe it clean. If you're ambitious, you can also lubricate the bushings.